Welcome to the second annual Sovereign Radio. I'm your host, Django Unchained, and I'm here with Bunny, the co-founder of Search on Dora. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So you gave a talk at Modular Summit, mm -hmm. and tell me what the title was again. Um, searching the New Frontier, the ser searching the multi-chain world, the multi-chain and multi-VN world. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. and what does that mean? So uh, Search and Dora, we're a multi-chain search engine. Uh, as of recently, we've also become a multi-VM search engine. We provide block explorers for every chain that we work with, as well as interoperability solutions, so letting people start transacting and interacting with all of these ecosystems. Uh, more recently, we've started expanding into different virtual machines, such as Move and Fluent. So now we're also becoming the first multi-VM search engine, which we believe is the new frontier of this multi-chain world. Mm -hmm. Which VMs do you currently support? So right now we support EVN, Move, and now the Blended VM. Um, a Blended VM from Fluent. From Fluent, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I guess to add a little bit of nuance, with Move, we support the SUE implementation of Move, the Aptos implementation of Move, and the Movement EVM implementation of Movement. Wow, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> Um, well, okay, that's excellent. That's that's a lot of VMs. Yes. Is uh, is there are there any plans to move, so mm -hmm. to speak, into Cosmosm VM? Mm -hmm. So something interesting is that we we started Dora like about two and a half, like three years ago. Yeah. And we started. But as a, uh, uh, let's disambiguate search on Dora from Dora Hacks. Yes, we started Dora two and a half years ago, almost three at this point. And we started initially as a substrate EVM at Cosmosm uh, Explorer, actually. We spent six months building within substrate. Um, after quite some time, we realized that the technology for Dora to come to life there we just wasn't there. And then as we, we built this generalizable indexer that will support substrate EVM and Cosmosm indexing. Uh, and then after we spent six months on substrate, we eventually decided to move on from it. We started building within EVMs and Cosmos. Within EVM land, the whole notion of a roll-up centric roadmap was starting to come to life. So then we effectively just got sucked into all of these EVM rollups and we've just stayed there since until now. I see. Mm -hmm. What happened with building substrate that caused you to migrate mm -hmm. over or move out of it? So we. So the, the original vision was for Dora to become the, the unified multi-chain search engine. A lot of the developer tooling within Substrate just wasn't there at the time. We had to build up our indexer from scratch. We had to build up different, we had to start maintaining different auxiliary developer infrastructure that was supposed to be maintained by some of the original Substrate builders. And then eventually we realized that the cost of doing all of this legwork to start onboarding more users into the Substrate ecosystem just wasn't going to pay off. And then we we still actually have the Substrate indexer in-house, and we have a lot of the auxiliary infrastructure still maintained by us. Um, so people are free to use it, free to deploy it if they want to, free to contribute. However, as soon as, as I said, as we started engaging with EVN ecosystems, then they were very much interested and eager and were able to offer a lot of users for us to keep on build on their ecosystem. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So now your search engine, so to speak, mm -hmm. is able to support a whole bunch of different chains, mm -hmm. uh, many of the major chains, and yeah. a user is able to go on your interface and do bridging and swapping rather seamlessly. Mm -hmm. So what's the goal mm -hmm. there? Um, and is there any are there any plans to expand to other ecosystems outside of uh, EVM and Fluent and Move? Yeah, so the ultimate true vision of Dora is the one in which we picture, we, we realized that one of the major key unlocks for Web2 adoption was one in which search, search engines actually became the norm to start discovering different web pages, right? That like there's this whole notion that, oh, change our websites, uh, which is, there's a little bit of nuance to that. But we do believe that eventually like goods and services will start getting served through on-chain means in the same way that just goods and services have been served through online means for a very long time at this point. So 
ultimate vision of Dora is one in which you're able to contextualize every single good and service that just so happens to be offered on chain and unify it together with online services. We picture a world in which you no longer have to go into even two separate search engines, one Web2 and one Web3. You can just go use a Web3 search engine that also indexes or has visibility into online means to be able to procure any service that you want. And because of that, we will, of course, follow any single PM that seems to be the one that provides the best service, the best goods and services. So we will continue to expand in every VM out there. Uh, right now, we've built a lot of very custom infrastructure for some of the new VMs, but we're already even seeing very early adoption from both developers and consumers on it. Amazing. On the architecture side, how are you able to support all these different blockchains? Because so very incompatible ecosystems. They they very much are, and it was it's very fascinating because I think search engines get into um, blockchains are quite such a database problem, right? So then you get into all of these um, into a nitty gritty of how a lot of these chains work. Uh, right now, the way our infrastructure is set up is that we we work with index index data providers as well as token such NFT. As the graph? Um, yes, we actually decided to not work too closely with the graph because we realized that the cost of indexing data in their current architecture was not going to be scalable for our own use cases. I have a lot of friends at the graph. It's just that the, and we very much wanted to work with them. It was just a problem that it will cost us several hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to actually index every single chain that we work with, whereas our current index data costs go up to like a few thousand, uh, for, indexing all of the major chains out there. Um, so that feels a lot more more scalable. We were able to achieve this through part having a very deep integration with products like GoldSky. Um, I'm sorry, say that again? GoldSky. GoldSky? GoldSky, which is one of the major uh, EVM, and also now it's starting to dive a little bit more into this multi-VM environment with us, as well as with, let's say, we realized that we need a lot of spam filtering, we need a lot of index, indexing off-chain metadata to actually contextualize token NFT uh, just data. Mm -hmm. So then we started working very closely with Simple Hash Team, who also now is one of the default infrastructure providers for token NFT APIs for the base ecosystem. So then this is this coupling of these three key infrastructure providers was what actually achieves us, uh, uh, let us achieve this 30 minute to like one day or maybe one week, depending if the chain is really large integration timelines for every major chain out there. But I think the, the chain that took us the longest to ingest was Celo or Gnosis. And that was more so a matter of the chain is ginormous. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard to integrate it. But even then, one week is a lot better than a standard deployment time. So let's say three months for some other block explorers out there. Right, mm -hmm. right. So. I looked at your interface mm -hmm. and the UX is similar to how uh, basically doing cross-chain transactions within Cosmos is mm -hmm. like, yeah. which is very compelling for the EVM ecosystem mm -hmm. because they don't typically have that, right? Mm -hmm. They don't really have really great, you know, one-click deploy UX mm -hmm. across many different EVM blockchains like we do in mm -hmm. Cosmos. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. Is there... What are the hurdles for Search Andorra from uh, integrating IPC chains? So the main hurdle is more so the ones that we're facing currently with a movement and fluent. The it's more so a matter that we need to build a lot of custom infrastructure. We still are. Uh, I think, as I said a little bit before the our interview, I actually started working within the Cosmos ecosystem. Like I was able to meet Tarun, Saki, Dev like all these like amazing uh, people that have helped build the Cosmos ecosystem for quite some time, uh, just very early in my career. And they, they were amazing. I was very passionate about it. And then we just haven't seen as much need for a product like Dora within the Cosmos ecosystem itself. I think it's a little bit more of a more of a cultural reason why we haven't been able to go into Cosmos, which is that these are very app-specific chains. When it comes to an app-specific chains, and there's not so much of a standardization of the good and service that you're providing, it takes a little bit more time to actually be able to coalesce all of this into one single search interface, as well as, of course, just infrastructural reasons of, um, I believe that the Numia team is actually really good at being able to provide the index data uh, needs that we have for integrating Cosmos chains, but there's only 
and there are a few chains that we could integrate. It's just that we will need to find the appropriate partners for doing these integrations. Some of them, let's say, so far having actually Goldsky has started indexing some Cosmos chains. Um, so we will be initially integrating with some of them, as well as with for powering interoperability interoperability solutions. We will most likely go with someone like Skip. Right. It sounds mm -hmm. like it's mostly. I mean, the the challenge with doing aggregation as mm -hmm. opposed to disaggregation is always the cost and the overhead mm -hmm. of running the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Um, but any any team that wants to do aggregation and mm -hmm. call themselves multi-chain or interchain mm -hmm. as an internet of blockchains, yeah. the end state of their product is always to aggregate all blockchain exactly. prosperity ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the space going for aggregators like yourself? So I think when we started Dora, we very much studied aggregation theory, especially within the context of search engines. And there's been a lot of work that was done by Google and early Google employees uh, on it, on how do, like effectively how aggregators become an ultimate disintermediator of every single marketplace. I mean, uh, Google is the ultimate aggregator. <laughs> exactly. Google being the ultimate aggregator of websites and websites just also happen to offer pretty much every single good and service out there. Um, there's no... There hasn't been many goods and services that haven't ended up turning online. And we expect the same to happen on chain. The interesting, I guess, nuance to that with block explorers is that block, there's this expectation that block explorers are both a developer and a consumer tooling at this point. Uh, we've seen a lot of the read only block explorers actually go bankrupt. Uh, we've had teams from anywhere from really Web3 native teams to really Web2 native teams, even Google at some point, um, some a team at Google actually spun out and built that Dora competitor. They raised 40 million. They went out of business within a year, just from the standpoint that they were not too familiar with what do on-chain users want to one out of on -chain, an on-chain ecosystem. So being able to properly curate and make very intentional decisions and honestly, quite frankly, bets on different technology on, and their level of adoption, such that you are able to pay your own database costs. That seems to be something that infrastructure providers need to get very good at. And it's quite reflexive in, in its own nature. Like when we integrate a chain, we see very high volume of usage on, on Dora, and we see a very high volume of usage on that chain itself, which we saw, especially with, let's say, when we integrated Scroll. Uh, Scroll, we saw quite a bit of usage, not even we saw quite a bit of usage, not even across all three of our locales, but primarily in our Doris contextualized to English, Spanish, South, uh, Korean, and Mandarin. But we saw the highest usage on Mandarin on Scroll. So it was very interesting because if Dora may have been just offering three of our locales, we wouldn't have seen as colossal of usage as we saw just because we supported Mandarin for a chain that, of course, had a predominantly Asian community at mm -hmm. the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Based on your experience mm -hmm. uh, of building an aggregator, mm -hmm. what would you say are the challenges that our space, the crypto space, has in order to scale? Mm -hmm. Right. It's there's obviously a lack of standardization across the board, and so that's a big challenge for mm -hmm. aggregators like yourself, like what you were alluding to with integrating various IPC chains. Mm -hmm. um, so because the cost right now is so monumental, where do you see the space going for aggregation and solving the user experience problem? So I think aggregators are very reflexive in the sense that they create, an aggregator can effectively enshrine certain UX and infrastructure support back to a chain, which then eventually makes it easier for other builders to start, to start building in that chain. Whenever we integrate a chain, we provide them with index data, live stream, index data, subgraphs, live streaming of data, token FT APIs, as well as the Block Explorer and Embedded Wallets, our interoperability solutions, a whole array of like your day one starter pack for if you have a chain. This makes it infinitely easier for chains to actually go out there and tell developers, hey, start building in my ecosystem. You are actually going to be able to do it. Look at all of our docs, right? Um, and be able, being able to replicate this exact UX for every single chain out there is perfect for accounting for the fact that this is all 
certain custom infrastructure or infrastructure that is generalizable enough across some ecosystems. However, this catering towards certain VMs does imply that we're actively not catering towards some other VMs. Why are we not doing that? It's more so a matter of, do we see enough adoption? Do we see, in, do we even as a team believe on a chain? We take very concentrated bets, I guess, uh, on every single ecosystem that we work with. And this does impact the developer needs, a uh, developer's needs on exploring new ecosystems. However, I think that that is almost quintessentially a problem of attention and communication from a chain. If a team is able to properly articulate why they believe in their technology, us and many other infrastructure teams out there will be more than happy to integrate them. Sure. Let's just zoom out mm -hmm. to the 10 to 20 year timeline. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, from my perspective, I see that the chains and all the infrastructure is going to be abstracted away anyway. Mm -hmm. And so do you imagine that in the future, whichever handful of projects that become the next Google or, or so forth, they're the ones that solve the, they're, they're the ones that somehow manage to reach economies of scale and integrate mm -hmm. every single chain and they become the ultimate aggregators. Mm -hmm. Do you see that happening in the next 10 to 20 years like I do? So we had a very interesting chat with a very large Web2 search engine uh, that was here at the conference yesterday. Um, Can you name that search engine? Maybe not because I don't want to make any commitments from their part, but they very much alluded to, oh, we will be making a lot of the data that you guys are working with into turning it into public data sets that any developer out there can start leveraging it. Uh, and then effectively we realized, oh, well, this is intermediate a lot of the index, the current index data providers or the solutions that even ourselves are providing currently. And we realized that yes, and actually we didn't necessarily fear this because even by creating these public data sets, you still need providers to actually streamline this data in an appropriate manner. Uh, latency is actually very important, it turns out, if you're building high throughput projects, uh, high throughput chains, even more so. Um, however, if we see this, chain of structure, even more public accessibility of databases, we see, and this, we start to see this notion of on-chain data finally becoming so publicly accessible that it, it's extremely commoditized. You can access it with a block space commoditized at this point. And people start to trust only a handful of interfaces to start ac accessing all of this on-chain information and actually start interacting on them. I even have these very real thesis that after being in the block explorer industry sub niche for quite some time that read only block explorers are going to die. Uh, as we have seen with so many teams already over the past two, three years. And what we are going to end up with is in a world in which every single good and service can be reliably provided through either on a blend of online and on chain means you just end up in a world in which you just have to trust that whatever aggregator you're using will be able to curate whatever service providers they are able to vet in a rapid enough manner with your needs and wants. Right. So I would imagine that the in the future of data aggregation and searchability of on-chain data, there has to be a partnership with AI in mm -hmm. order to crunch all of that information in a an intelligent way. Mm -hmm. And so, right, if you're excited to look into the future of mm -hmm. Web3 and where where this is going, then be sure to tune into Bunny's talk at Modular Summit. Yeah, well, thank, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.